Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on a summary of types of attacks, part one. Today we're going to be discussing inside threats and attacks, and then we're going to conclude by discussing some outside threats and attacks. I have a ton of information, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We will begin with inside threats and attacks. The first inside threat is malicious employees. Malicious employees are difficult to defend against as the threat is already inside the network. You must grant them resources in order for them to do their jobs. But one of the best defenses against malicious employees is using the principle of least privilege. This principle is only granting the least amount of authorization that is required for people to get their work done. And it is one of the best defenses against malicious employees. Then there's privilege escalation. This is attempting to raise a user account's privileges to an administrative level, thus giving them access to almost everything. Privilege escalation usually occurs due to a vulnerability that may be present in the operating system itself. However, the vulnerability may also be present in another piece of software. The best defense is to remove all known vulnerabilities from operating systems and software. As a matter of fact, that is a security best practice. Then there is social engineering. This is the process of using social pressure to cause somebody to compromise a system from inside the defenses of the network. The social pressure can be applied in multiple forms. It can come by phone, it can be in person, it can arrive via email, or even through a rogue website or by any other method that applies social pressure on inside users to compromise the system. ARP cache poisoning is a threat and an attack. The ARP cache, which maps IP addresses to MAC addresses, is corrupted by an attacker, with the end result being that the attacker has control of which IP addresses are associated with MAC addresses. ARP cache poisoning is commonly used in man-in-the-middle attacks. A client-side attack is an attack on a system through vulnerabilities that may be present within software on a client system. The attacks often originate from internet applications or messaging applications, but they attempt to exploit a vulnerability on software that resides on a client machine inside of the defenses of the network. Then there are replay attacks. It's an attack that uses a packet sniffer to capture network session data. The attacker then resubmits the captured packets in an effort to gain access to the network. Transitive access attacks are also a threat. The attacker attempts to get a user to click on a hyperlink to a Microsoft Windows shared folder that's been exploited. If the user clicks on the hyperlink, the user's system is forced to send account credentials, allowing the attacker to attempt to get access to other resources via a set of valid credentials. Now let's discuss man-in-the-middle attacks. The attacker is not necessarily inside the network per se, but the attacker is between the two endpoints that are communicating on a network. The attack allows a malicious user to be able to view all network packets that are flowing between the communicating hosts. In a worst case scenario, with a man in the middle attack, may kick out one of the users and hijack the session. With that covered, let's move to outside threats and attacks. We begin with spoofing. An attacker attempts to gain access to network resources by having his or her system masquerade as a trusted system. This is achieved by modifying either the IP address or the MAC address of the attacking system so that it looks like a trusted system. Spam is unsolicited bulk email or junk mail that attempts to entice a person into buying a product or service. While in most cases the receiving of spam isn't a security threat, it is a waste of resources which is considered a security issue. Related to spam is SPIM, or spam with instant messaging. 
This is when an attacker harvests instant message IDs and then attempts to entice the end user to click on a hyperlink that is included in an instant message. SPIM is often used as the first step in another type of attack, as in performing a farming type attack. DNS poisoning is where the attacker changes the DNS records for a specific website in order to redirect traffic to a malicious website. The change in DNS record can either be on the local DNS apparatus or it may occur at a higher level, as in at the internet service provider's DNS apparatus. Typo squatting, or otherwise known as URL hijacking, is another common type of attack. The attacker sets up a malicious website using common misspellings of legitimate URL names. The attacker assumes that a certain amount of traffic will reach the malicious website merely due to user error. And you want to know what? They are correct. They will get a certain amount of traffic due to misspellings. Then there is the nefarious waterhole attack. The attacker compromises a legitimate trusted website. That means that they have planted malicious code on the website. As users visit the trusted website, the malicious code is executed and the attack is completed. Now let's conclude by talking about the denial of service threat or the DOS threat. This covers a very broad category of threats to networks and systems. Any threat that can potentially keep users or customers from using network resources as designated can be considered a type of denial of service threat. And there are many DOS attacks and threats that are out there. We're just going to cover a few of them today. There's the permanent DOS attack. It's an attempt to permanently deny a network resource for others. It can be done by physically destroying a resource or by damaging, as in corrupting, the underlying operating system beyond repair. Then there's the traditional DOS attack. It's an attempt to flood a network with enough traffic to bring it down. By bringing down the network, they're keeping legitimate users from accessing it. The traditional DOS attack is commonly used with malformed ICMP requests. Then there's the distributed DOS attack, or the DDoS attack. It's a DOS attack in which more than a single system is involved in sending the attack. Often, a botnet is used to implement the DDoS attack. And finally, we have the Smurf attack, which is also known as Smurfing. This is where a network is flooded with ICMP requests in which the source address for the requests appears to be that of the intended target. So that address has been spoofed. As the network responds to the ICMP requests, the victim is denied access to the network because they're getting flooded with bogus responses. Now that concludes this session on a summary of types of attacks. I began by talking about inside threats and attacks, and I concluded with a brief discussion on some outside threats and attacks. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.